match between Wilcox Snellings and Steve Sachs, and then we've got two matches to choose from for stream two. We may try to stagger them in some fashion, but two uh, second chance matches, uh, Petko Kostadinov versus uh, Jorgen Gronstedt. And again, if Mochi and Sander were both to win this morning, then uh, we have Mochi and Sander. So we're going to try to get y'all as many great matches with the great players as we can. So, uh, anyway, Sander and, uh, this is Mark Dixon from the UK. So, uh, 11 point match. This should be fun. Sander's, uh, kind of fired up and ready to go as, uh, Sander's always in a jovial, uh, mood. He has fun. He enjoys the game. So, uh, this, this should be fun. And then again, at 2 p.m., tune in. I mean, do we have some matches? Wilcox Snelling and Steve Sachs. Wow, they're in the undefeated bracket. Most, seemingly, and, and all the players here are accomplished, but most of the really big-name players, uh, do they, he might not, he was looking for dice. I think they're in that cup, but Mark was, I think, or Sander. I don't know. The, uh, most of the big name players, I mean, like 15 or 18 really top players, um, uh, lost in the first round. I mean, these are very nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's Mishi Poo is with us. Diego, Diego Munoz from Santiago, Chile. How are you, uh, Diego? And here we go. First, uh, first match. Mark is playing the white checkers on the top. Sander, the black checkers on the bottom. We'll give match updates for Mochi's match, too. Yeah. Hoping they'd play right there. Well, if they, uh. They will be. Okay, well, this is perfect. Make sure the scoreboard's on that side so I can see it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sorry, we're uh, everybody's getting settled in and, and going this morning. Okay, Sander has a 4-5 to play. He's going to make the uh, forward anchor on the 20. Actually, I'm sorry, that's, that was Dixon's play. Double threes for, uh, for Sander. One thing, Tara, when uh, sometime in the next 30 minutes, when Arda shows up, have him come over here and talk to me, please. And uh, also, if you see Julie or Rory or anybody up there, try to get them to make a couple of signs like that printed with their computer in front of them. Pause it. Okay, whatever. Do you want me to pause it for you? Oh, no, no, no. I was just putting on some music. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, so uh, where are we? I'm sorry. little administration and whatever early on this morning. So, uh, Sander. That lace is nice. Roll. He can't move anything but on his side of the board. The other seven checkers are frozen, so he's going to make the five shift, and then he's got another to play. He'll slot the, the bar point. So, uh, nice double deuce by uh, so, okay, nice uh, nice structure by uh, by Sander, he's going to try to get that last checker out with it get, without it getting hit, but it does get hit. So, uh, and Mark, you know, if he can contain this checker for a roll or two, he's in uh, got a pretty good structure himself. Okay, Sander's going to, boy, he doesn't want to put that checker. Maybe he slots the, well, he won't reach. He's got to do that. He didn't want to stack that checker, but he had to. Didn't want to bury one very deep, four, three. So he's going to make the point, put Sander in the air. 
has a lot of builders behind. So if the uh, Sander, excuse me, Sander dances, here comes the cube. Mark, uh, you know, it's probably uh, certainly reasonable cube, but I wonder if, uh, you know, he comes into this playing Sander, who's a defending world champion, defending UBC champion, maybe. And Mark, I've visited with him a little bit. He's a little... Uh, you know, he's an astute guy. He might have come in with the idea that, uh, you know, I'm going to play super aggressively and make uh, I need to take a photo of it. make Sander work for it here. I need to take Is a it photo two or oh, two or oh, one? Uh, yeah. Sander, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sander's like, oh, go ahead and take two. <laughs> I got to do the, the pre-match photograph. So uh, five, two for Mark going to be down and does he play the customary split he does sander six two so he's going to run pretty much standard reply here set of aces it's nice since he'd already moved a spare to the eight so it allows him to make both the five and the seven three two he's going to step up and safety steps up so that he can uh, attempt to escape with that checker Mark uh, momentarily glanced at the cube. He, <laughs> he had uh, success in a somewhat similar position on the prior game, but uh, not quite the advantage yet. So, okay, 6-2. So, uh, Sander needs a 6 to get out of there. 6-5, there it goes. He... We're going to pan the camera for just a second here, so don't be alarmed. You're, uh, whoa, where are you going? Oh, she's showing uh, Mochi and his opponent are playing right next to us, and uh, she's painting the uh, commentator camera. Mochi has, this is what we deemed Mochi's office. He's been uh, playing next to the commentary station all week and, and do, giving lessons earlier and yeah, the the winner of Mochi's match it plays uh, the winner of this Sander uh, Mark Dixon match. So uh, you know, if the two favorites were to prevail, which is not always the case in Beckham, and as we learned in the first round yesterday, but if the two favorites prevail, then we've got a rematch pairing of sorts. <laughs> They've met many times in the past, but uh, Sander and and Mochi. There's so many people lost and uh, so many of the top rated players are, uh, lost in the first round yesterday that we've got some just incredible pairings coming up in the uh, in the second chance bracket. And we're a little bit of the uh, it, we're in a little bit of a dilemma of trying to get to show all the matches that we want to show, the really good, strong matches. And, of course, as uh, as we... Uh, okay, Sanders going to go ahead and send this. Mark scoops it up. He's got the anchor to protect himself. Um, but anyway, I was going to say these second chance matches, like potentially Mochi and Sander and the definite uh, Pecco and uh, and Jorgen. You know, we wanted to get those guys on the stream, but, uh, you know, if they, one of them in each of those matches, you know, the loser's out of the competition as far as being world champion. So, uh, you know, and, and therefore we lose uh, probably perhaps the opportunity to, to stream some of these people at all. So uh, it's kind of a real uh, juggling match to, uh, you know, to get good, strong matches that, you know, the players deserve and that the viewers want to see and take advantage of opportunities before some of these people are eliminated from the, uh, from the competition. So it's, it's a, you know, logistical nightmare uh, to try to get them all in. 
Okay. Mark was a little confused there. But he's he has the cube. He's probably, I hadn't counted it, but he's probably slightly down. But he's got a, a nice structure. Has a nice structure. And, uh, you know, Sanders got to clear that, that midpoint. But I, hopefully, from his perspective, he'll be able to do it from a... Uh, it will be an indirect shot rather than a, a direct shot so that'll minimize the potential of getting hit okay mark doesn't have a tremendous amount of time But Sander, not exactly busting with timing either. He's got two strip points in the outfield. He's got to try to clear. Okay, he's going to play 6-3, I suspect, and save, uh, hopefully keep his anchor for another roll after that one, 3-2. So Sander uh, is not uh, getting too much cooperation from the dice either. Hey, this is now the question is in Sanders' mind do you uh, play 13 8, try to clear the two back checkers, and uh, you know, leave an eight shot peg now, or do you uh, pay later, as they say? So he's counting what if that's an eight, there's uh, what two sixes, five threes, and four fours, so there's five numbers. Is that all? Double twos as well. So, uh, he's going to pay now. Give him the eight shot. And he gets it with the twos. Okay. Okay, an ace in reply. Okay, so now... Mark's going to have to, he's got to enter, and he dances, so can Sander roll a six and get out of there, and uh, and he does, and a six ace. Now, this is interesting. He's going to make the two point. I, I confidently predict. Okay, and now, oh, he gets in with the five, so that cleans up. One checker, Sander can now perhaps only have three back rather than uh, four, and he misses that, so he's just going to have the two uh, the two checkers back. And with the five point game, it's all but him. You can't ever say that in backgammon. It's extremely unlikely that he would get gammoned. Um, you know, but there are if Sander rolls a five three six three. Not five three, a six three initially. Um, oh, he doesn't stay. I'm surprised. I thought he might stay with the one because uh, Sander could roll a six three. Okay, so Sander comes in with the five one. Mark, night. Oh, that will uh, change the complexion of this game completely. So now. Um, Whoa, and aces. Mark's sitting over there with a loaded pistol in his hand in the form of a cube. And uh, he's counting it up right now. They both have two off, but uh, Mark's got a hip count advantage. So what's he got? 41 plus 8 is 49. Sanders got... 24, 29, 37... 46, 48, 50. What did I say, Ian? It's like 49 to 50. So uh, I think he plays on for the moment. Yeah, white has 49, black has 50, if I'm correct. 24, 29, 37, 
46, 50. So it was 49 to 50. Okay, double deuces. He can take three more checkers off, and he's down to uh, 42 pips. 4-1, so Sanders at 45. So now it's 42-45. Mark's on shake, and Mark is... Uh, What's that? A checker ahead. Three pips and a checker ahead. He has that void on the two, but Sander likely has some misses ahead of him. So this is a, you know, I don't know that it's a, I don't know that it's a recube. Center cube, maybe. Recube, but I don't think it, it is. But again, he 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 knows he's playing Sander, and he's uh, an underdog. No offense to to Mark. Any anyone in the world would be an underdog to Sander. So how aggressively does does Mark push this? He does. Sander lets it go. So here I was debating whether or not it was a recube, and and Sander, of course, he had the time that Mark was reviewing that to review it himself and Sander lets it go. Three zero Mark. Five four. Five two. One it's nice, nice shakes in this game. They they got some more difficult uh, roles to play in a couple of the earlier games, but this one, particularly for Sanders, has been uh, fairly straightforward out of the gate. Six two. What's he going to do? Yeah, come out and we go to the eight point or seven point. I'm sorry. Double fours, that'll work. He's going to hit that. He's going to go to the four, and he's going to step up with the fourth one, I suspect. He does. Okay. Cocked. Sixes. So now, not quite there yet, and he has a 3-0 lead, he, so he can... Uh, Step, pull his foot a bit more off the gas pedal, perhaps. Got to be that. He, he did it once and then put it back and looked around, but that had to be the only play. And now 1-4, uh, so Sander. Now, Mark, Mark is not too far from... Uh, if, if Sander were to dance here and he... He doesn't dance, but he doesn't roll a decent roll either. Here comes the cube. Based on what I've seen in the first two games, I fully expect Mark might to send it here, and he does. Sander exercising the the uh, unemotional, unemotional discipline of an elite player. Let's it go again. He's not going to, uh, you know, give Mark any freebies here. Mark's getting enough. Freebies from the uh, from the dice. Okay, three two. Now, what do you do here? Several things. I mean, he could come down and split. He could have slotted on the five. He could have any number of things. Six two. He can make the four point, or he can, uh, you know, come out and make it the uh, eighteen. Going to make the eighteen. Stack there and uh, double sixes. Doesn't have too many checkers that play. All the ones on the mid are blocked by the, the other bar point. Okay, so Mark is... Uh, Head in the race on the virtue of the double sixes. Now he'd like to safety this trailer. Can't, but he can reduce it, reduce the number of shots uh, that he's vulnerable to. 
So now it's only twos and sevens, but the three fours and one sixes are blocked. Set of fours, so uh, Sanders going to go to the five point. So let us see. Now again, and I typically, uh, y'all probably heard me say this too many times, but I try to do a very interactive uh, commentary program. Uh, so I am reading the chat line. So if you have comments, critiques, suggestions, questions, whatever, uh, just type them in and uh, I'll try to respond as as appropriately, as appropriately, as appropriate. Hmm. Anyway, I'll, I'll respond. Okay, Mark was uh, counting, seeing, uh, evaluating the uh, the position. Sander gets a. Two. What does he do here? He's gonna. I don't know. No, you make the two point and slot the four. There you go. Victor is in the undefeated, Mishi. And his, uh, his opponent is someone that none of us are familiar with so uh, with some other more in certain regards attractive matches victor's match at uh, at 1400 was not really in consideration to be streamed but certainly if he uh, he keeps winning we'll see him there's something to be said for victor playing someone we none of us know um you know, Victor doesn't get streamed, but uh, Victor uh, probably is a bigger favorite than, than he might typically be with some others. So, double-edged sword. 6-1 by Mark. That's a shot somewhere. Although Sander, you know, had crunched a bit on the prior roll. Okay, he's going to leave as few shots as possible. Gets hit, but uh, I don't know. Sander has to hit him, but, you know, it leaves a, a lot of returns, and Mark has a, a good four-point board over there. Set of fives will do the job. Doesn't hit anything, but certainly advances a lot of checkers, a lot of pips. Do one thing here, real quick. I like to uh, bring up the other match too, so that I can kind of stay abreast of uh, what's going on. Two sixty-three. The uh, okay, so. The Sander, he's got a he's well ahead in the race, and the question is, and he's down 4-0, well ahead in the race, well down in the match. The question is, can he uh, get those two checkers around without getting hit? And uh, he's looking at all his permutations, what he would do with specific roles, how many shots that would leave Mark. Mark's doing the same thing while Sanders doing it. Okay, that's not the good role because he has to leave a double shot 
there are threes and sixes or any combination. A six four. So what's the four? Fair amount of returns coming back the other way. Three five. He's got to just try to get out of there. Okay. Dancing. Now Mark's going to send it back. Sanders got to let it go again. So, uh, no, Diego, you cannot play the championship and the intermediate. You got to select one or the other. And, well, one, just logically that follows. But secondly, the, the schedule uh, overlap and complications would make it all but impossible to do anyway. No, anybody can play. Pony up your 1,250 euros, and you too can play in the Baggammon World Championship. Okay. Okay, so Sanders is in a hole 6-0 here, and Mark's got the early advantage in this next game. Got a four prime with two checkers behind it. Okay, so uh, Sanders going to have to try to make something happen here, and just everything is uh, going Mark's way. Now you just keep that cube in your pocket. You, up six zero against Sander, you. Uh, Can't be quite as uh, aggressive if you've been in the uh, previous matches or previous games. I'm sorry. You know, be grateful to get the early lead and don't don't give it away frivolously. Sounds like uh, Mishy is watching with two tabs or two screens. She's watching both matches here. Yeah, and uh, find that find that guy's name. Oh, I know. Will's wife can sit next to him and when he plays. Here, reply. Okay. Set of nickels. <laughs> so, uh, Okay, an update uh, next door to us here. Mochi is losing 6 1 to P. Samoyas. I'm not sure if that's the pronunciation, and I don't know the gentleman. But Samoyas leads Mochi 6 1, and 
Dixon leads uh, Sanders six zero. So, uh, so much for our, maybe we'll get a mochi uh, Sander in the last chance on Sunday. So. Yeah. Would you uh, uh, five, five, one, one, two, two, three. Uh, <laughs> how was it? Can we go back to the beginning? I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's another problem at all. Thank you. <laughs> five, five, one, two. <laughs> you know, and again, y'all can see, and, and we've seen it. Previously, we saw it in some of the matches last year. I mean, here, Sander is so far in his matches getting it, getting his backside handed to him. But uh, he's always having fun. He's always, you know, to his opponents. Uh, yeah, Mark Dixon's a, a school teacher, teaches, uh, what do you tell me, physics and math in like a high school type environment. Takes the cube, which I, I, you know, I can see that. I can see that. Um, you know, Sanders got some potential, but uh, Mark's got a lot of potential as well. Sanders trying to, to get back into the match and get back into the match he might with this game. Going to make the three-point step up. So uh, this one could leave a scar. Thank you, Jesper. Some good, uh, good work going on here. And it's kind of interesting, uh, you know. Obviously, uh, and y'all can't see him. You see him off and on. You hear him, but uh, Mark Olson enjoys uh, doing some commentary too when he when he has the time and and uh, significant matches. Uh, are available to him so uh <laughs> Tara said here she's laughing she said well you know she's noticed a trend the only matches Sanders been losing are the ones he doesn't drink beer so <laughs> that's pretty funny you got uh, got water in there. Uh, maybe somebody needs to take him to Carlson's or something. See if he can turn this around. We got a gnat flying around in this space in front of my monitor here. Okay, Mark is. Uh, Managed to get out of this dilemma, perhaps. Yes, Diego, to a degree that had us happen. And uh, yeah, DDA Yasserov beat Petco uh, four or five years ago. And this guy, uh, what was his name? Peter Hallberg from uh, Norway was something of a surprise winner back about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, you know, and it's interesting, and I'd meant to uh, comment on this. You know, we have uh, Sander and Mochi and many other of the great players are in the second chance right now, which, you know, again, you can still win the tournament in the second chance. But, uh, you know, think back, however, four or five years ago when Jorgen Grandstedt won his third world championship, he lost his first match and then had to win – 11 matches in a row to win the title. And uh, and he did it. Might have even been 12. So, uh, and Grandstead has put himself in the same position this year. He lost his first match, as did Petco. I got a, I have a list here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, of the players that lost in the first round. Somebody had posted it. Maybe I still have it here somewhere. It was just 
an amazing uh, list of players. Somebody look at under find backgammon world championship and see if you can if you would please. Backgammon World Championship Facebook page. So, uh, yeah, maybe. Yes, you're right. Okay, Mark. Two, three, four. Not a, many other things you know. Thank you. Oh, here it is. Here's what I was looking for. Listen to this list. Players that lost in the first round. Wilcox Snellings. Did they lose in the first round? No, this is the undefeated. There's another list. Okay, yeah. Players that lost their first match. Mochi, Michi, Akiko... Kazuki, Petko, Joe Russell, John O'Hagan, David Wells, Thomas Tenlin, Jorgen Grandstedt, Sander, Nevzat Dogan, Dag Fens Narheim, Gear Peterson, John Roysette, Zdenek Ziska, and Ali Sutton Bellinay. So, I mean, come on, guys. That's like 20 of the very best players here. And, uh, yeah, there, uh, Jesper had picked up that list, too. Thank you, Jesper. So uh, now, we'll see, this is the type of game. I mean, this is a game, obviously, for even our lesser player perspective, um, is probably the critical game of this match. Uh, Dixon holding a two cube. He's uh, probably well ahead in the match. Uh, or well ahead in the game in the race. So uh, let's see how this works. Okay, he rolls a set of twos, which uh, brings those trailing checkers closer to perhaps enable him to clear them. And this is uh, getting increasingly dire for, uh, for Sander. Glancing to the side, Mochi trails 6-2 in his match. 5-3, so he's able to clear those two back checkers. So now uh, Sanders in a world of hurt. So Sanders just going to have to pretty much... Uh, well, I won't say concede. What's the 70, 84 for white? 84, 32, 58, 94, 84, 94. Uh, Dixon has a 10 pip lead. But I just, I don't think you want to get too crazy with that cube that's a i think sander would take the recube and uh, have a really quick trigger finger on sending an eight back to mark so uh, i have it as 84 94 so i think that's too close to um, you know and sander those checkers that are in his border have much better distribution than those of uh Mark, they both have six crossovers to get into their home board. Okay, Jesper's got 84.92, so he's got it at eight pips, which makes it even uh, even less of a recube. I had it at 10, but uh, anyway, let's see. That's 52. You better count that again, Jesper. It's 36, 68, 26. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was counting. Uh, 
the checkers on the mid, I was counting the two times uh, 13 rather than two times 12. Okay, so it is eight pips, which uh, I don't know, color me cautious or whatever, but I, I just cannot see. And, and they both got plenty of time, and it's not a consideration here, so he can spend as much time as he wants to thinking about it. But I, I don't think it merits uh, that much consideration. But he's playing, and I'm not. So uh, um, when again, they both know the uh, the gravity of the situation. In uh, Mark Dixon, it's kind of like. Uh, does he think it's his day? <laughs> Do you feel lucky? Huh? He's stretching and walking around while Mark's thinking about recubing. But Mark only has an eight pip lead. I, I don't. I don't think it's a recube, but. Uh, I just got to think uh, Sandra would regard this as a gift recube. Yeah, so no, there's no, uh, nothing bad. So he decides not to send it. I looked away. I didn't see the roll. But uh, so now he got it. He got 6-3 against 3-1. He gained five more pips. So he's 13 pips up. Yep, there it is. I, I thought Sander would snap that up. And then, uh, you know, he's going to, like I say, have a quick trigger finger if he gets uh, anything going his way at all. That of threes, that hurts. Sandra needs uh, to go to the whip here, as it were. It's just not gonna. Just not gonna. Not gonna work for him. It doesn't seem. He just. It, He's got to have big numbers, and he's getting nothing but little numbers, not even the medium-sized numbers. So uh, he just, oh, so 10-0 uh, mark. Is that an 8-6 over there? I can't see. Okay, so Mochi has rallied and has... <laughs> Is going up eight six in his match, you know, but Sander. The action uh, of me taking a photo is enough yeah, to turn the boat. He can lose no more. <laughs> Ten yeah, zero Crawford. Yeah, like Mark <laughs> Just so, me thinking uh, about taking a photo <laughs> is enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you beat me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will. <laughs> this, this. <laughs> I don't think this is a dream. You know, it's 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 interesting, um, and it's it's backgammon, right? I mean, last year was Sanders' year in every regard. World Championship, uh, he never lost a match. You know, he uh, he won the uh, undefeated bracket and then won the final final. He beat Mochi in the UBC uh, final. I mean, it was just all all Sander. And this year here at the World Championship, at least, it's, I mean, Sander can't, uh, as I use the, I think, humorous term of buzzard luck. 
he uh, he can't kill anything and he can't find anything dead. I mean, it's just all against him. It was true, uh, you know, he lost that match against uh, Aton Ilfelt yesterday. Um, DMP. And then uh, comes back here this morning and he was, con uh, you know, hoping to you know, have a good fun match with uh, Mochi in the second chance, but uh, doesn't look like he's going to have that opportunity. So, uh, unfortunately, I think for all of us, because he's uh, such a fun guy to watch and be around and this, that, and the other, this is probably the, you know, last time we're going to see Sander on the, on the stream. He's going to be out of the uh, competition to win the world championship. Thank you. Okay, five, two. Okay, Sanders just gonna. Hey, Eric, what's happening? So, uh, You know, like they say, some days chickens, some days feathers. And uh, this is the feather day, at least to this point, for uh, for Sander. Okay. Now, Mark has a a great defensive board over there, so uh, Sanders got to be careful. You know, your first and do you, don't even leave a fly shot. Just play to the three. Yeah. I mean, it's water is leaking out of every seam right now, so don't uh, don't push it. Yeah, at that time he had no choice. Six four, so he closes him out. That's correct, Diego. Justin led 12-0 against uh, Oliver Squire in the main, and uh, it went south. Now, there are no Gs in this game, so Sanders just got to uh, bring it home. Get on the board and uh, get past the Crawford game. So then it's uh, buckle your seat belts with... Uh, with the cube. Single anytime you want. I'll just give it a try. Yeah. It's not often I get to play in this situation, so oh, yeah, I want to savor every minute of it. That yeah, is absolutely fine. And I've done this in duets, so. Yeah. That's enough now. Okay, so Sander gets on the board. It's ten to one. Um, what Mark going to start? There you go. <laughs> because he's got to start with a seven seven pip advantage. Okay, so uh, let's see how Sander. He's not going to play games. It's just coming out. So uh, he's going to send the cube first roll every time. David. 
Yeah. Maybe. That's that's interesting, yeah. Okay, so uh Yeah. Sander is uh up against the wall and the wall is in a deep hole. So uh it's gonna take a Herculean effort to uh to recover here. Well, it's kind of crazy. I glanced over just to, I guess, see what's going on on uh, the uh, high roller jackpot. Okay, 5-1 Peter. And uh, so that's probably going to, and of course, they're playing for a hell of a lot of money. So that game is going to be, uh, match is going to be perhaps a bit more deliberate and intense and what have you than these uh, second chance matches. And it's kind of interesting, you know, this, uh, the second chance bracket is of course a progressive black bracket. So everyone ultimately that loses at any point in any round in the undefeated bracket falls into the second chance bracket in a progressive fashion. So these guys that lost in the, in the first round and Sander and Mochi, unfortunately both got anti-buys in the, in the second chance bracket. And uh, so if you look there at the top, world championship second chance round of 1024. So they, from the point that Mochi and Sander are right now, they would have to win uh, 10, uh, have to win 10 rounds to win the consolation. Okay. Come in, Z, if you want. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 about over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, pretty neat. Yes, I mean that was Zdenek Ziska walking by and uh, chatted with me briefly. So it's kind of neat. It, uh, I mean, here at Monte Carlo. Yeah, all the best backgammon players in the world just uh, in the room, walking around, chatting all the time. So it's, it's really a, kind of a neat uh, experience. Okay, Sander is... Uh, I was going to say he only has five crossovers and was ahead in that regard, but then uh, Mark rolls a set of threes, so he's down to five crossovers as well. So it's very even, uh, very even race. Just who uh, who rolls the best dice? And Sanders uh, actually a, a wee bit ahead here. Six five, maybe, maybe he's not a wee bit ahead any longer. No four pips. No. Six one. Like half my so uh, out. Sanders on life support here in the uh, second chance bracket of the uh, world championship. He loses his match. He loses the opportunity to defend his world championship title.
Okay, but he's he's fighting, but as our late great friend Falafel loved to say, and a very, very close friend of uh, Sander, he's fighting, you know, he's he's getting some, some decent rolls, not giving up to the end, and that's backgammon. So Sander is fighting a set of aces. Doesn't, uh, doesn't help the cause much. 5-1. The same number of checkers, four six. Maybe uh, maybe Sander can bring this home six two. But he's on shake, a checker advantage, and a little better distribution. So it looks like he will win this game. And uh, you know, the long journey begins with the first step, right? And he's uh, he's uh, taken a couple of steps here. Ooh, pardon me. Okay. Boom. So Sander is rallied to 10 3. Okay. So uh, here we go. Tighten that seat belt. Fixing to enter some air turbulence. Two one. Boom! Here it comes. So uh, now this uh, is the, I guess, most common uh, scenario. Or I don't know. Scenario of these types of matches is you double on the first roll as the trailer you double on the first roll every time now some of the elite players will will play some uh, will Play some games at times and not double immediately and then try to get a You know a bad take later or whatever so but there are some games to be played, but You know standard trailing initially 10-0 Crawford he uh, wasn't going to fool around with that. He was just going to uh, play it straight and send the cube. Mochi is 10-7 uh, post Crawford now. Okay. I don't know. I'm thinking I'm making the three. And started down that route. That's the point you want. You like to build them in order. There you go. That's it. Is that not right? Is it? It's like this. It's like this. Yes. Yeah. This is okay. Sure. It's legal. Yeah. Yeah. Should yeah. We check it. Yeah, you can check it. If you like. I'm pretty sure it was like this. But I think uh, it was. Right, should we, should we not you. check it? I'm like 99% sure. I am as well. But not 99. I, uh, that's that's in it. Right. Uh, you, for, she rolled. I think, I think yeah, they're going to work it out, but there here. seems to be some three, confusion two, as to what the original no, play was or one. the original two. position right. was. Should we ask them? Let's if you like. I mean, 99 is enough I'm, for me. But I'm, I'm, That's okay. I, I also think right, it was right, like this. Right. That's, yeah? that's enough. Okay. All right. So Okay. They've agreed upon it now. They've agreed on it, Tara, and moving on. Sorry? Yeah, we've we've said it was fine. Did we, did we made an we illegal play? No, I just mean that Right. Let's pause. No, no, no. no we just, we no. discussed well, that, we, but we'll, decided we'll to carry on. What, even if it was illegal, we're just, we're just we've, playing. We've condoned it now. Let me unpause your clock. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tara's gone in there, and I, I think everyone's ag agreed now as to what it was, and Legal. we're moving on. <laughs> I don't know. This one might have been illegal. <laughs> that would have been a good spot to slip one in, yeah? <laughs> this is what always happens in classical. Right? Yeah, 
Okay. Agreed to by Sander. So he's things he would like to do, but he got to get those back checkers moving, and he's just not rolling to get them roll moving. <laughs> Must be, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, uh, as Jesper notes, uh, PJT lost in the first round and and rebought. They they had twelve to start. Um, actually, they started with twelve. They had two more who were already wanting to play, then one more showed up that wanted to play, and then. Uh, PJT took a rebuy, so that enabled them to fill the uh, bracket of 16. And as Jesper said, make for a pretty uh, pretty good investment to to rebuy uh, in that. They're playing, I think, first uh, first place is 56,000 euros, and second place is 28,000 euros. I know. So, uh, I'm just scared. Not bad. Not bad for a couple hours of work this morning. I know it's the right <laughs> play. I'm still scared. Yeah. yeah. Really. Okay. Got to split to or come down to the three. Maximize the number of builders working on the two. Okay. Sanders in and out. Three, the mark a set of sixes. That'll work. That Two, three, yeah. four. Still take me my time to find it. Again, uh, Sanders on life support, and the machine is starting to make a beeping sound here. Uh, approaching a situation, I'm afraid. We got uh, looking next door here. Mochi's still leading 10, 10 7 post Crawford. So, uh, of course, the uh, opponent being four away with a two cube in play is only a gammon away from a win. Mark trying to figure out. Uh, Figure out what he's doing here. Whoa, I saw the six and thought lightning was about to strike. But uh, take in the two and off the four. Oh, he's going to do it the other way even. All he's got to do is win, so gammons don't mean anything. But I think I would have still yet played it the other way. Two, he's just... Uh, Try to leave absolutely nothing to chance. And again, Roll here. all he has to do with win, gammons and bad gammons and <laughs> yeah. all kinds of things mean mean nothing to him. All he has to do is win. Had to leave a shot and got missed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Don't want to double force. <laughs> no, no, no. That was wrong. Careless. Take the six off and play the ace from four to three. That way you're even on the back. 
And see, there's the shot. That was just pure carelessness there. Mark knows better than that. Just absolute carelessness. Thank you. Match Thank is you over. Well done. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Sander Lylehoff will not be the world champion this year. Uh, could you do me a big favor? As he loses in the second uh, chance bracket. Could you just hold this cube for me? And, uh, yeah, sure. Because uh, nice uh, my, my, it's my 50th birthday this year. Okay, so really? I'm going to step away for a few moments. Uh, supported me to come At to 2 p.m., we've got uh, a couple of great matches coming up, so tune in. And right now, Stream 1 is still continuing with Mark Olson and Phil uh, Simborg on commentary. And uh, Mario Kuhl and Peter Jess Thompson playing in the High Roller Jackpot Final. I'm very No, he's, he, he's an asshole. It's not, it's not still recording. He's, um, yeah, very lucky to have him as a father. Yeah. Well done. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You got yeah. it. And what a cube. Yeah, it's nice. How, how did you make that one? So my, um, you know Bone Club Forbes? Do you know what? Bone Club Forbes in England? No. Guy has, uh, Bone Club is a board maker, oh, but they also oh, make cubes. Really no, he and, uh, yeah, he designed it for me and made it. It's, it's nice, yeah? <laughs> nice weight. Thank you so much. You got it.